law. And so we have Assistant Attorney General Linda Pollock will make that presentation at this time. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Welcome. Here we are once again. So, I, I'll give you two choices today. I would do this every year. You can hear my five-minute recap of the open meeting law and open record and public records, or I've got a 45-minute slide, you know, PowerPoint presentation on, on these topics. Which one would you like? Please proceed with the, the former. <laughs> Darn, I keep wanting to put this thing on. Uh, okay, so we've all heard this before. Um, just a um, quick reminder. Um, you are appointed by and under the direction of the governor. That means you are a public body subject to the open meeting law. All of your deliberations and your proceedings are conducted here in this room in open session. Um, all of your discussions, deliberations, votes concerning um, the prospective candidates are in this room in, 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 the, in public. Um, you, you may, we can go into executive session, but um, only for legal advice. We never discuss uh, the candidates or their qualifications in executive session. As you know, um, you are in an, an official meeting um, after today's meeting, or even during today's meeting. Um, you, you should not um, discuss through telephone, email, <coughs> Twitters, well, outside of this meeting, um, any communications among yourselves um, concerning, a, you know, a, a, any issue that may lead to a final action, which of course is, you know, who you should recommend for further interviews um, for, for next week. After today's meeting, after you have selected candidates for further interviews, you uh, should not communicate with these selected candidates. However, you are free to take phone calls and other communications from the public about these candidates' qualifications. Um, we will ask you to not forward those uh, third-party communications with your other board members, but instead forward them to the board secretary, and the board secretary will then distribute all of these public communications to the other board members. Um, also a reminder that all of the communications received by the public are in fact public record, although obviously a telephone call, you know, is not memorialized in any way. You can, of course, um, send to the board secretary your summary of the phone call so that it can be distributed to the other board members. Um, you're also subject to the public records law. Um, you are required to maintain um, all public records um, which are reasonable and necessary to provide an accurate accounting of your official duties. Uh, therefore, we have always asked you to, um, if you are, are taking notes during today's meeting or next week's meeting, um, please give your notes to the board secretary at the end of the meeting of all Finally, the conflict of interest. Um, as a board member, um, you always want to avoid the appearance of impropriety. So if a candidate is known to you um, in some way, you will want to state on the record the nature of your knowledge of this candidate, um, whether or not you've ever had any communications with him or her. Um, it would be appropriate for you at this point to state, uh, although you know the candidate, um, that you have no pecuniary proprietary interest in this candidate's um, selection or consideration, and that your knowledge of the candidate will not affect your objective or impartial analysis of the candidate's qualifications. Um, it is not necessary to recuse yourself simply because you know the candidate. The issue really is whether or not you have a financial relationship with the candidate. So is, if there's any questions, uh, that would include my, my remarks. Uh, I have uh, one simple one, I suppose. Mm -hmm. In turning over notes we have, are those a matter of public record, are they returned to us, or are they just? They're, they're, you can certainly have them returned to you, but they will be, not, they will be placed in the public record, yes. OK. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd just like to say we want to thank Linda Pollock for all the work she's done and Amelia Leavenworth. Both of them have been our right arm. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next order of business would be a call to the public and those are persons wishing to speak. Uh, 
is you complete a card as I had indicated earlier. And um, we do have, it is uh, limited to three minutes. And no discussion or action will be taken by the board. Uh, any items requiring further discussion or action will be included in the future board meetings. We do have one request to speak. And so if you would, Ms. Sandy Barr, would you come forward, please? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Sandy Barr. I'm the chapter director for Sierra Club's Grand Canyon chapter. Um, the governor's office received an application for the Game and Fish Commission from endangered Mexican gray wolf Esperanza. While, uh, unfortunately, this application uh, didn't get forwarded to you, uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about it. You can't consider a Mexican wolf for recommendation to the governor. She obviously would not be able to get in the building for the inter interview, plus we need her in the wild where she belongs. But I do ask you to consider what she represents as you make your decisions about who to recommend to the commission. Esperanza, as um, you know, is uh, hope in Spanish. Uh, she represents hope for wildlife and especially Mexican wolves. But she also represents a large number of Arizonans who feel disenfranchised and shut out by the current Game and Fish Commission. She represents a whole lot of people who do not have a voice on the commission. No one expects that the commission would represent 100% of their views but we should be able to expect that they would consider them with respect and that they would seek to include, not exclude. We should expect a commission that believes in healthy, sustainable populations of all of Arizona's native wildlife, not a commission that approaches certain wildlife more like a crop and considers others more of a nuisance. We should expect a commission that is concerned about protecting wildlife habitat, we have none of these things in the current commission. Amazingly, many of the department biologists continue to do good work despite the commission. Why not help them with that? Why not help them do their jobs by recommending someone who represents what Esperanza represents, good science, ecological health, and hope for Mexican wolves and our state's wildlife overall? I ask you to consider those things in reviewing the applications and uh, during your interviews. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Farmer. That concludes the request to speak at this time. And we'll move on to the next order of business, which is a discussion and deliberations of the board process and procedures, including the process for evaluating applicants. We'll be discussing the process by which they will be evaluating applicants for the commission for commission recommendation. And for that purpose, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask that um, Commissioner Children uh, take a little bit of lead on this, and because I understand, I think, from the years of experience, that uh, you are the one who best guides us in this conversation. So if you could uh, give us a little bit of a lead on that, I'd certainly appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mr. Not your person. Um, it has been our practice since the establishment of this uh, board to study the names of the applicants, the uh, resumes, their preparation for the job, and their recommendations that they, they have received, and to hear public comments such as those that we have just heard, and to I uh, look at those names in terms of who would be able to fulfill the mission of the commission. And we have statutory requirements regarding county of residence and regarding party registration and also, of course, residency in Arizona. The process we have followed in the past is for the chairperson to read the list of applicants in alphabetical order. And if someone wishes to know more about this applicant or to uh, further them to the interview session, then that member of the board says, further consideration. At the end of the first reading of the list, 
all those who received at least one request for further consideration are forwarded to a second list. The second time around, the chairperson also reads the list of uh, remaining candidates, and two members of the board need to say that they wish further consideration. At the end of that second reading, then the chair will um, list the number of the names of those persons who received two requests for further consideration. Then we go about a process of asking our board secretary to kindly invite those remaining names to the interview session, which this year will be the 15th. At that session, uh, the interview session, they need to appear in person, to be present. And I believe that, I don't need to go into details on the second session because we're just dealing with the first. But for the first, it's one time through, one person says further consideration. That puts them on the second list, second time through, it requires two members of the board to say they want to hear more from this candidate. That's a summary of the process. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Or board member. Um, in any case, uh, so with that, We'll, we'll start the process that was just described, uh, board member Chilton, and go through the list. I have actually two lists. Yeah, okay, that's... Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. We do need, I believe, to go through the board and we all state whether we have any rec recusals or other issues. Thank you for that. And let's go ahead and do exactly that. And within this time, we will uh, indicate whether we know anyone and whether there is any financial conflict uh, with any of the individuals we may know or, or otherwise. And I will start with uh, Commissioner. Um, I keep saying that. Board member um, Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have no prior knowledge of any of the applicants for this year. Um, I had an email forwarded to me um, on behalf of James Gowner, and he had a conflict with his vacation schedule and um, requested if he was selected today as an interviewee next week that uh, he was asking if he could be put up toward the front of the schedule. And I passed that on to Amelia, and she said she could probably accommodate that. Um, I have not talked to him directly. That was just forwarded to me by a third party. Um, and I have no financial involvement with any of the applicants. Very good. Commissioner, or board member Schultz. I have no financial involvement whatsoever with any of the applicants. I know no two of them. One is Bill Brake and one is uh, Mr. Governor, because he is a former applicant. But that's the extent of my knowledge. And just to continue on the line, I do not know any of the applicants, uh, nor do I have any financial uh, interest uh, shared with any of them. Um, I have no recusals. Uh, I have met Mr. Goffner uh, through this process when he was interviewed before. Other than that, I don't believe I've even met any of the other applicants. Very good. So with that uh, accomplished and, and so recorded, uh, we'll start uh, with the process of determining whether or not there are any of the applicants that we have indicated here. The first round would be, as has been described, uh, indicating uh, whether or not there is an applicant that we would want to consider for further consideration. And I'll start with uh, Leland Brake. Further consideration. And at this point in time, it's all that we actually need. Is that yes, it? that's correct. Okay. Uh, John Blusterbaum. Kelly Clark. Further consideration. Bobby Cooper. Uh, further um, consideration. James Gowner. Further consideration. Daryl Melvin. 
further consideration? Susan Morgan. Tammy Suttle. Bob Thomas. Further consideration. Okay, and if I have that correctly, then we have uh, Leland Brake, um, John Osterbaum. And, no, uh, I do not believe oh, Mr. I'm Chair. sorry, I have Kelly Clark, Daryl Melvin, and Bob Thomas. So Bobby Cooper and Jane Goffner. Oh, oh sorry. Goffner. Okay. All right, with those all listed, uh, again, I'll, I'll restate that since I uh, got that uh, a little incomplete the first time. Leland Brake, Kelly Clark, Bobby Cooper, James Guffner, and Bob Thomas. And Daryl Miller. Okay, I'm starting out rough on this. Okay, so as for uh, those uh, six individuals have been indicated for first further consideration and uh, we go and now to, uh, to recant them and start with Leland Brake. Further consideration. Further consideration. For, well, further consideration. Uh, Kelly Clark. Further consideration. Further consideration. Bobby Cooper. Further consideration. Further consideration. James Gowner. Further consideration. Further consideration. Daryl Melvin. Further consideration. Bob Thomas. Further consideration. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I would like to move that we invite Leland Brake, Kelly Clark, Bobby Cooper, James Gumner. We need instruction on how to pronounce his name to the interview session on the 15th. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Motions. Um, I'm sorry, members of the board. Um, my notes reflect that in addition to Mr. Brake, Mr. Clark, Mr. Cooper, Mr. Goffner. Yeah, it's Goffner. Yeah, um, Mr. Melvin and Mr. Thomas also received two votes of further consideration. No. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. They were both one. It might be the Mr. Chairman. There was only one. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I understand. I understand. So on second on, on the second round, they only got one vote. Okay, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Apologies. All right, then. Uh, the motion has been made to and seconded to consider uh, Leland Brake, Kelly Clark. Bobby Cooper and James Guffnow, yeah, however we need to pronounce that, I hope we will understand, uh, to move forward uh, to the interview process. So that motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please indicate by aye. 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 As opposed? Motion passes, and that would be the list of individuals that we would move forward to the invitation, or rather, for interviews. So with that, Accomplished. That is our primary order of business here to this this morning. Our next uh, meeting would be on Wednesday, November 15th. For those interviews, the meetings will be held in the Arizona Game and Fish Quail Room, 5000 West Carefree Highway, Phoenix, Arizona. And future agenda items: the board will be interviewing selected applicants uh, for the Arizona that that's what we will be doing. That. As far as future agenda items as we have it listed here, that is a stated agenda item on our um, our meeting of the 15th, is it not? Yeah, Pardon? Pardon? 
Right, the, the item eight here is uh, on the agenda. It indicates the future agenda items. The board will be interviewing selected applicants for the Arizona Game and Fish yes. Commission. Yes. That is the nature of the agenda. Yes, it is. Okay. So we, we are then complete. Um,